big head is a nutritional problem. Yes. Whether it's early in their life or later in their life. But as with most things camel related, as we are finding, the more we have to do with camels, it's about making sure they are most, you know, close to their natural environment, that they're, they're living and eating the natural Naturally. things that they would have. And again, as we yes. keep coming back to it, if we manage to do that, we can avoid or minimise a lot of these diseases. Maggie obviously is here with us for our monthly camel vet talk and this uh this month we're talking about osteodystrophy and it's otherwise known as big head in mainly horses and cattle i think dogs get it too yeah i guess so but yeah big head is the sort of general name for it yeah yeah for us really really um important topic like for some unbeknownst reason we have attracted a lot of camels into our lives young camels particularly that just had osteodystrophy so they came from the outback um and then they came to us and then you know it, oh, like it's so it's such a sad sad disease now, i do want you to talk technically about it but if i just want to give people a bit of a background on why why it's so important that um, our members here know about this disease. I want to um, show you what osteodystrophy is in camels and this isn't an easy video to do because um, these three camels have it and today is the last day that we'll see them. Don't mind me. <laughs> But the main point is about this disease is that I want to show you what it does to the camel because, you know, it's, it's yes, I'm upset, but I'm sort of glad they're going to be put out of their misery because um, they're going to die anyway. Um, so let's get, so I'll, I'll try and be as precise as possible, but it's a little bit hard without a clear head. But um, this is little Shiloh here. And you can see um, on his face, see those big lumps on either side. He's might, probably not going to stand still because he's a very cuddly camel. Um, but you can see on this angle, see the the um, the bumps, and they're they're on either side of his head as well. So um, you can see there. So these are just like hard cellulose growths, like they're not even squishy, they're hard as a rock. And what that's going to do eventually is, um, well, what it's growing into his nasal, na nasal cavity and we've had a camel, his mum actually, we had her and um, we got her from, from another place, like all of these camels. Um, they've all come to us from different sources. Um, and he, can you give me a head? Um, it's he's going to suffocate himself basically with those growths so that's why we've made the decision today well not today we made the decision a little while ago to to put them out of their misery and you know here he is he's very sweet camel he's, he's actually our baby so he was born. big head or fibrous osteodystrophy it's got a few different names um, it's basically a prolonged elevation of a hyperparathyroid hormone. So mm -hmm. it's not a disease, it's kind of a hormonal imbalance of mm -hmm. one particular hormone, um, called, it's a hyperparathyroid hormone, well, parathyroid hormone. There's, as Tara was saying, it's not, it's definitely not contagious. So there's no infectious component. It is, there's two reasons why you can get it if you're a camel. One is called the primary reason, um, and that's actually high, called hyper, so hyper meaning above, not hypo, hyper parathyroidism. Mm -hmm. um, the parathyroid glands are paired glands that sit on either side of the thyroid gland in your neck. 
So your thyroid gland in your neck pretty much regulates metabolism. Uh, the hyper or the parathyroid gland sit on either side and they pretty much navigate calcium absorption and resorption in the body. So mm -hmm, regulating mm -hmm. calcium, vitamin D in the body. Primary hyperparathyroidism or primary big head is if they have a tumour of this gland. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. different from goiter. So goiter is a tumour of the thyroid gland and that's iodine related. We'll get onto that later. Although you won't okay. have that problem in Australia really. Um, okay. This will affect overseas people as well. Okay, this, this can yes. happen anywhere in the world. So there's the primary cause, which is a tumour. The most, not very common. I don't even think I've ever diagnosed a primary primary source the secondary source which is the most prevalent um, is called this will kill you this one secondary nutritional hyperparathyroidism okay basically i think you can understand why now they cut that up and just called it big head because yes. it's a lot easier to say and it gives a good understanding of the disease but big head mm. will look the same whether it's nutritional or the tumour. It does the mm. same thing. Yes. So what I guess the take home is big head is a nutritional problem. Yes. Whether it's early in their life or later in their life. But as with most things camel related, as we are finding, the more we have to do with camels, it's about making sure they are most, you know, close to their natural environment, that they're, they're living and eating the natural Naturally. things that they would have. And again, as we yes. keep coming back to it, if we manage to do that, we can avoid or minimise a lot of these diseases. But yes. then the reality is a lot of the people here are in a system, if you've got a few camels, you're going to be raising them in a much more intensive system mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. with that comes these problems. So it's a really important mm -hmm. one. Well, oh, here's the interesting thing with this, with this little, like this little bad batch. I hate saying it like that because it just takes mm. the emotion out of it. Let's just put it like that for now. Yep. We had this really bad batch of camels and um, they'd all came from, um, so the wild originally and then went to dairies and then they were the babies of the mothers and then we got we got the the babies basically got it. okay and we probably last year we put down six at one time the, you know, oh that's but, awful it was just like what the hell it felt like it was contagious because we had all these of course like one one you know like yeah um it was just insane and and, and just to get your head around like you know this is such a common thing because some of our clients have had camels with that and yeah. um and, and it's very common in the united states as well there's camels over there that get it so it's um it's a terrible thing i think that's why it's so important the camel owners um that you really be informed about this and really just you get on to the nutritional side of stuff because it's deadly um we'll go through the symptoms shortly um because you were i think you were talking about uh, so you were saying there was two types of this osteodystrophy, yeah. the tumour type and the nutritional type. Yeah, so it's the same disease and um, it causes the same processes. But one is from, the, from a tumour and that's only going to happen in a, usually a really old yes. animal. Um, and obviously, you know, nutrition plays a part in that. But that's kind of, that's what I call bad luck science. It's just bad luck. They got it. Okay, bad yeah. luck science happens a lot. Yeah. The second one is nutritional. And sometimes that's even more, uh, it's definitely more emotional, I think, because it's such a long process to get to that phase and you do feel a bit more invested in it, it that is. way and it feels a bit more personal. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that's really difficult. And I, I um, admire you for saying that you had the, the six and you did put them down. A, that's a big call. Like it's a big decision to have to make. And, um, and unfortunately, in some cases, it is the only decision, as you've obviously found out. But um, for people to 
to, mm. you know, to admit that they have it and it's nothing, you know, sometimes if you've, as we just mentioned in the chat before, if you're buying camels from somewhere else, sometimes it doesn't matter what you do. It's what happened before then. So mm -hmm. you can't take mm -hmm. on all the, all the blame That's and exactly, responsibility. I know. That's exactly the, how we felt. And it's funny because one of the, it's not funny, haha, -ha, but you know, yeah, um, funny weird. one of the calves that we, yeah, is that we did put down and was born on a farm, but his mother had osteodystrophy and he was pretty much born with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, he at two, like at one and a half, he was starting to grow his um, his nasal growth, which we'll talk about shortly. But yeah, and that was heartbreaking. That's remarkable. Like, oh. mm. So that's remarkable, and that means that she had been dealing with that. So we'll get into a few things. Um, I guess clinical signs we can start with first. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it look like for those that have been yes. lucky enough? A lot of people up in my end of Australia, in the northern end, and in Queensland, we don't really see as much of it. Um, mm -hmm. But clinical signs are these sort of thickened nasal bones, but it's thickening of a lot of facial bones. Now that can often yes. be, when you see a thickened bone, sometimes that can mean wobbly teeth as well. Um, and it's usually these, it's usually these big frontal sort of sinuses, given that their nose is that, but it's this massive top mm -hmm. nose here, that bone there, and also these yeah. frontal sinuses. Right on the side right on the yeah. side and you'll often get one side being bigger than the other side and there's a whole lot of reasons for that that we'll go into a bit later but it's usually pretty diagnostic or what's called pathognomonic which means yes. the pathology matches the name because it's got they've got a big mm. head um but what mm -hmm. that big head is it's not actually excess bone this is the really interesting thing about the disease so Remember I called it fibrous osteodystrophy? What happens is it's mm -hmm. actually a deficiency. It's a calcium deficiency or a low calcium absorption. And what that does, and I'll go through in a little bit long, uh, more, but what that does is instead of the bone, the body laying down normal, strong, what's called trabeculae, so strong, um, if you think of bone right. as having concrete reinforcement in it. So instead of mm -hmm. those, the steel concrete reinforcement being trabecular bone, it ends up being fibrous tissue. So basically mm. it's spongy, but it just grows. So it just grows and it fills the bone with this spongy material rather than solid bone. So for the bone to get the strength it needs, it needs to lay down more of this fibrous material and that's why they get these big heads. I have no idea why it sits in their head. I, I don't think anyone's yeah. even done that. It can occur in other, in other um, uh, bones, I guess, but the only ones I've ever seen that are diagnostic of big head are these ones. Yeah, and here's the thing that we've noticed. Um, I feel like, sadly, we're professionals at diagnosing this because like we yeah. had yeah we put down six last year because um for those playing at home because this this nasal fibrous stuff grows and grows it actually suffocates them so they end up uh -huh. they can't breathe and um we didn't you know that's not a nice way to die so um we put them out of their suffering before they that sort of happened um but we had we had a few before that as well like um but also what we noticed um the other thing that i've noticed with osteodystrophy is that they get stunted by their growth like uh, their growth is stunted so this little guy here he's actually four years old and he really isn't that like he's not as big as our other four-year-olds um, and we noticed that when we first got him how tiny he was for his age but we thought that could have been because he was bottle red or which he was by somebody else um, so we gave him the benefit of the doubt but then you can see with his face too he's um, he's got the gross on the side of his face either side not as bad as Shiloh Shiloh's the worst who was over there um, but Morgan's growing them and we just know how it's going to end once it gets to that nasal growth it's really hard to it seems to be once they get these nasal growths it's really doesn't seem reversible it hasn't been proven that it's reversible um and we can see these guys suffering and that their their nasal growths are only getting bigger and bigger 
This is Red, as you can see, he's super skinny. Amazing looking camel, and he was actually a red camel, so his coat has gone, lost all its color. Um, he's very skinny. He's got no hump, um, well, very little hump. And we, for, for two years, we've been trying to put weight on him, and it's just, it's been near impossible. And he's had been through di spouts of diarrhea and parasitic control, and it's been really hard. But you can see on the side of his face too, that's where he's growing his his growth. So, um, goodbye, buddy. Um, yeah, so it's not it's not um, good for them. Obviously, like Red here, he actually struggles to get up and down. Like he looks really arthritic, and he's only like a four-year-old camel, five-year-old I think. So he's five. That one over there is Morgan. He's three, and Shiloh's no Morgan over there's probably four or five too, actually. And Shiloh's three. Um, it's been really heartbreaking, actually. <laughs> the other thing with the the nasal growth is. Um, some of my research that I've been doing is they ended up, they see he's not, he's actually, that's how his mouth is all the time. He can't close his mouth or he wouldn't be able to breathe. So he's actually breathing through his mouth, not so much through his nose, just a tiny bit, if anything. So what can happen from that is they get, they can get gum disease and their teeth end up falling out. It's just freaking one thing after another. And I just didn't want to see them suffer anymore. We didn't want to see them suffer anymore. So we made that hard decision to let them go <laughs> and they know they so know they so know what's about to happen a lot of it is straight up pain unfortunately it is it is a painful condition it's just like a general ache uh, and as you said arthritis is sort of the next thing again that's to do with you know the bone development but Mm. What the whole, yeah, it, it, and the what happens when you get that large um, nasal passage, as you say, they can suffocate. And one of the early signs is often people say, gee, the, he's breathing really noisily or he's not eating very mm. well. He's not eating properly. He's dropping a lot of feed. Um, he makes this funny noise when he's running, breathing. And that can be an early indicator. Um, but one thing that I often tell people is just maybe once a month, go to the front of the camel with your iPhone or whatever and just take a photo take a photo take a photo in the same position so you can compare it month by month you can delete them at mm. the end um, mm. unless you want a roll of camel selfies but take a photo of that and then just compare it month by month is that getting bigger is that do you think that's bigger because it's an easier way because if you're seeing these, if you're seeing your babies every day, so if you're seeing the camels every day, you're not going to, mm. you're not going to get those little signs. But um, if you can go back to what he looked like back in April of last year, you're like, oh, okay, we need to intervene on yeah. this now. Noticed another sign was because um, they can't breathe properly through their nose, they will um, they'll breathe through their mouth. And so they get the droopy lip. Yeah. Um, to breathe through their mouth, but then their gums get all dry and then they're, they're up to problems with their teeth because their gums are drying out. So how bad does this get? Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. just, how bad uh, are you going it to let feels it like get? a downhill I mean, slope. Um, Normally yeah. they die from starvation um, because they can't get up to move around. They can't chew uh, without, huge pain or without yeah. fracturing because they got sore teeth as well they got sore teeth well yeah. the teeth are loose the teeth are loose because normally yeah. with your teeth the teeth are held solid tight into that hard bone but these teeth are loose so that mm -hmm. that hurts um and they are not um getting enough air in because as you say if you can't nasal breathe you have to mouth breathe but you can't eat mm. and breathe at the same time. So something's got to give. So usually they just have this horrible decline in weight. Um, but the trouble is with them being camels, they're so stoic and they're such a survival species. They don't mm -hmm. just lie down and die easily. They will go on and on mm. and on. And that's when we often have to come in and all too often you do have to euthanize them. Um, mm. You can manage them, manage them and you can, so, uh, slow down the progression of the disease yes but unfortunately guys once the damage has been done the actual physical damage to their head and their bones you cannot replace that with 
normal bone. Mm. So once you have physical signs of big head, it's about management. It's, you, you're not going to cure it. It's about yeah. stopping the progression. And you can yeah. manage it. Um, Hey, just quickly, how would you like access to the full tutorial on this camel topic? Become a member of our Camel Ear Academy now and you not only get access to this camel information, but a whole library of camel information. The Camel Ear Academy is an online portal for camel owners and camel lovers just like you, which consists of a library of camel information, including entertaining camel vet talks and procedures, camel handling techniques and camel psychology talks, access to the latest and greatest info on camel husbandry and well-being, even workshops on how to make your own camel equipment, and of course, a forum to ask your camel questions to camel professionals. This is just a glimpse on what you'll get access to in the Camel Ear Academy. It's the camel flicks for the camel lover. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. Come join us, our resident camel vet, and a community of camel connectors worldwide over at cameleeracademy.com. That's C-A-M-E-L-E-E-R academy.com.